In this video, I'm gonna help you go from overwhelmed, uncertain agency owner to dedicated, committed, consistent, results achieving agency owner. And we're gonna do this through the use of a few very simple but incredibly powerful mindset shifts and thinking tools. These are the exact same tools that I use with all of my clients and all of my students in order to help them go from struggling and floundering around with just one or two, maybe three clients, all the way up to getting consistent 10K, 20K, even 50K months. So with all that said, let me introduce you to the first concept, which is that of having a North Star versus the black hole. You see, one of the biggest issues that most agency owners make, especially those who are struggling to break through to those consistent 10K, 20K, 50K months, is really being uncertain or not having a clear and guiding focus, goal, mission, vision for what they want their business, their agency, and their lives to look like. Now, we're going to call this the North Star. Essentially, what this is, is some kind of guiding light at the end that is guiding all of your direction. It's it's pushing you in the right direction, making sure you're making the right choices that are in alignment with where you want to go. The problem is, is that most people don't have this. If they do, it's often fluffy and, uh, and intangible and just a little bit out there. Like, I want to be successful or I want to be rich or I want to get a nice car or travel the world or whatever it is. But that's not enough. We've got to actually put a specific tangible number on it. And really anything is okay here as long as you believe that this is something that is worth working towards and something that you can realistically achieve in a short period of time. If all of this is new to you, then my suggestion really is to set that first marker at 10K a month. I mean, this is a really achievable number for most people that put in the time, put in the effort, follow the steps, do the things that are required. In fact, if you go through things in the right way and you do them in a certain way, making sure that you're delivering good results and you're studying and you're staying on top of things, it's almost, I don't want to say unbelievable, but improbable that you wouldn't hit this and hit it probably a lot sooner than you think is possible. Of course, if you're already at 10K a month, feel free to uh, put that to 100 or a million or whatever it is that you want to go for. Now, the opposite of the North Star isn't the opposite of a 10K month, which would be, say, a 0K month or opposite of a 100K month, which I guess is also a 0K month. The opposite of all of these goals is questions. It's ambiguity. It's uncertainty. It's not having a clear and decisive focus, a direction in order to guide yourself towards, which means that you end up moving in all kinds of wrong directions. You take on clients outside of the niche that you know you should be operating in. You end up delivering all kinds of different services that are not profitable, are not fun, are not sustainable. You end up doing Facebook ads for this client and fixing this client's website and doing SEO over there, trying to do some kind of Google optimization over there, and you never really get to focus in because you're not clear on what you want to do. So the first thing and by far the most important thing is you've got to spend time and really, really outline what your North Star is. So where do you want to live? What kind of services do you want to offer? What kind of clients do you want to work with? How many clients do you want to have? What are the price points that you're going to charge? Um, what are you going to wear? What are you going to drive? What are you going to eat? What does your everyday look like? What time do you wake up? What time do you go to bed? What, what are your friends and your relationships and all of that look like? You've got to be as clear and specific as possible. And this really is a no judgment zone. You get to do this and write whatever you like. You don't have to show anybody either. So don't be, um, don't make it bigger than you want because you think you want it. And certainly don't make it smaller than you want because you think it's not achievable. I assure you, as you start taking these steps, you're going to probably realize that you've set your goals too low, but we can cross that in another video. So get very clear on what you need to do. This is the very first step. Let's say 10K a month is that goal. Well, five clients at 2K gives you 10K. So just like that, we've already set a vision and now we've reverse engineered the steps or at least the the requirements that are going to be needed in order to achieve that. And of course, from those five clients, you can reverse engineer that further. What kind of outreach are you going to need to do? What kind of content you're going to need to create? What kind of uh, follow-up are you need to perform, et cetera. But none of that is going to happen without first establishing what this North Star goal truly is. And again, you get to choose. There is no one size fits all. All right, next, let's talk about where to focus your time and your energy and how to evaluate different opportunities as they come across your plate. So using this rough benchmark of, say, 10K a month as our goal, of course, feel free to move this 
up to 20K or 50K or 100K, I would strongly suggest not moving it down because this is a very realistic and achievable number if you're willing to put in the work and do the things required. But regardless, 10K a month, so 10K times 12 months of the year gives us 120 grand a year. So this is kind of the rough income that we're shooting for. Then what we can do is we can take that and we can divide it by 2000, which is roughly the amount of hours per year that you're going to be working. If you were working, say a 40 hour work week, my suggestion is we're probably going to want to work a little bit more to front load this. In the early days of my agency, I worked um, a ridiculous amount, but as much as I'm going to say that probably wasn't the healthiest thing to do, it's hard to argue with the results that it produced and the success that it enabled me to achieve. So regardless, we take that 120 grand divided by 2000 hours, that gives us a value per hour of 60 bucks. This means that if this is your goal, your value per hour is worth about 60 bucks. So you've got to start evaluating different opportunities as they come across your plate and start assigning a monetary value to them, whether they're going to be in alignment with where you're trying to do, in alignment with the value that you have, and also, are they in alignment with moving you closer to your North Star, or are they moving you more to this like ambiguous black hole where you're doing a whole bunch of stuff, you don't really know why you're doing it, and you end up ending up on just kind of a, a different kind of nine to five job. Only this one is self-constructed because you're just doing stuff you don't like for people you don't like. A disaster situation that we can uh, we can safely avoid here. So now, let's say that we've got all these different opportunities that come across your plate and we've assigned 60 bucks an hour. So you might have opportunity one here, which is a client that says, hey, can you build me a website? And then you've got opportunity over here, which is, we'll say, uh, some local SEO stuff. And then you've got... Opportunity number three over here, which is a client in the wrong niche, but still kind of a relatively interesting service. Maybe it's Facebook ads, which you've decided to focus on. So we'll put them over there. And then number four, we're going to put the random client who's in random niche doing random things once you, I don't know, wash their car or walk their dog or whatever it is, which again, a lot of people are going to tell you, no, don't do that. Don't walk dogs, wash cars. You're worth more than that. You're better than that. And the fact is you're going to be, but if you're just getting started and you got to pay the bills and you're looking to transition and to make this agency a full-time thing, provided that it is serving this thing here, 60 bucks per hour or more, depending on whatever it is that you need to achieve. If it's doing that to pay some of the bills and still making sure that you've got enough time to do more important tasks to grow your agency, then um, I, for one, am not above doing that kind of work. When I first started my agency, I did all kinds of menial small jobs. And that was after leaving the corporate world and making a very good salary and then having to go out on my own and work at minimum wage retail spots, just literally to pay the bills while I was trying to figure this agency game out. So money we need in order to reinvest in ourselves, in our education, in the software, in basically proving to ourselves that we're valuable human beings capable of doing things. So regardless, we need to assign a monetary value to the different opportunities that come across your plate, but money is just one piece of the puzzle. There's other things that you need to look at as well when we're looking at the different opportunities. So we talked about money. The other one is experience. When you're looking at these opportunities, say the web, the local SEO, client in a wrong niche, this random dude that wants you to wash his car and walk his dog or whatever, is it going to give you relevant, valuable experience or training? If so, it may be worth adjusting our value per hour. Maybe it's worth doing for free. A lot of people seem to have this huge problem with working for free. But the fact is, if you're struggling to get more clients, you need more clients, even if they're low paying or no paying, because you can get testimonials, you can get case studies, you can get referrals, you can also get relevant, valuable training and experience in order to become better at your craft so that the next time you go and pitch a client, have a conversation with them, you're going to feel more confident in yourself and your ability to actually get them results. So take a look at that as well, experience and training. Third variable, connections and network. Is this in a niche, in an industry, in an area that you want to pursue more? Is this something that's going to help you establish relationships that are going to be beneficial in the future? All of these are important considerations. And then lastly, but still somewhat important, fun and enjoyment. Is this going to be fun work? Is it going to be um, a really cool industry? Are you going to work with really neat people? Are you going to do fun projects? Whatever it is. The thing is, if you have the opportunity to take on different clients and they match the money, the experience, the training, the connections, the fun and the enjoyment, then yes, do those things. 
all of those things all of the time. And of course, the way that we make sure we're doing that is by setting things up structurally from first principles, building your agency around identifying your niche, crafting a really good offer, putting in a, a minimum viable agency structure, and then doing all of the other things. But regardless, if you're coming across different tasks, different clients, and say the money's bad, it's not really going to be that much experience, but the connections are good and the fun's good, well, maybe. Uh, but again, you're going to have to sort of balance and measure each of these opportunities as they come up. And above all, you really want to stay focused on this North Star. That is that is it. That is the guiding principle. So it's a balance. And I can't sit here and tell you to this opportunity is good and that one's bad. You're going to have to evaluate them using these criteria, but it is going to be helpful in moving you forward towards achieving your ultimate end goals. Also, opportunity cost. Let's move it up here. Here's the thing with opportunity cost. Every time you say yes to something, to one thing, you're saying no to an infinite number of other things that could happen in that time. For example, if I decide to have lunch with a buddy at 12 p.m., well, from the hours of 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., I've said yes to him, which means I've said no to my family, I've said no to my kids, I've said no to my other clients, I've said no to going snowboarding or mountain biking or traveling, I've said no to reading a book, I've said no to watching a video, I've said no to, to all of the other things that could and potentially would happen during that time. So you need to be selective, you need to be strategic, and you need to make sure, again, it all comes back to that North Star. Is this moving me closer to the person that I want to become, to the agency that I want to build, or is it moving me further away? What you're going to find very quickly is that uh, with a little bit of practice, it gets easy. You're going to start to realize very soon that, say, playing an extra hour of video games is moving me further away. So by saying yes to the video games, I'm saying no to making a lot more money. By saying yes to going out partying and drinking too much, I'm saying no to all of the other uh, things that I could be doing. There's a reason that I live the way that I do, which is not normal by any average uh, person's evaluation. So I don't drink. I don't smoke. I go to bed at 8.30 p.m. normally. I wake up around 4 a.m. I've got a very strict uh, workout routine, eating regimen. All of these things, they didn't happen overnight. They were muscles that were built up over time, but they've led to incredible results by understanding and prioritizing and scheduling the things that I know are going to get me the absolute best results and then making sure to factor those in. Also, if that's not enough, the great saying, memento mori, which means the sort of quasi-literal in interpretation, uh, you could leave life at any moment. At any time, you could die, which is terrifying and, uh, and, and a very morbid thing to talk about when we're talking about building an agency. But important. It's really important to understand that you need to have a sense of urgency with what you're doing. I don't care if you're 20 years old or 40 years old or 60 years old or 80 years old. Death comes for us all, and it comes at random times, and we have nothing that we can do about it in many cases, provided we're doing our basic safety precautions. Look both ways before you cross the street, my friend. But the point is, life is short. You got to take action. The time is going to pass anyway, so we might as well be guiding and directing it towards the things that are going to make you the best version of yourself and then taking those consistent actions. So again, we use all of this when we're measuring opportunities. When something comes across your plate, you have to ask yourself, is this worthy of the person that I want to become? Is this worthy of my one life, my one time here on the planet, this short amount of time that I've got? Am I really going to be spending my time doing this or would it be better focused with people that love and support me on activities that are going to help me grow my business, my agency, pursue my goals, etc.? All right, next, sunk cost fallacy. This is a doozy. And it's one that gets a lot of people, I fall prey to this all the time, which is why I have to keep reminding myself of this. What sunk cost fallacy is, is essentially attaching too much value to things that we've already invested in and then continuing to do that because we already have. So for example, if you bought a bunch of really expensive clothes that you just think are atrocious and you're like, well, I don't even know what I was thinking buying all these clothes, but you keep them. That's a sunk cost fallacy. You're probably never going to wear them again. We should just get rid of them to clear up mental and physical space. Again, the example here, hey, look, if we don't get rid of the anchor, the boat will sink. And then this guy over here, oh man, sunk cost fallacy guy. No, the anchor was expensive. I love this little diagram because that's literally it. We keep doing things that we know are not good for us, that we know are not helping us achieve our goals, build our agencies, get more clients, make more money. But we keep doing them because... That's how we've always done things. This is just what I've always done. This is who I am. And I've got this attachment to this thing. 
Rather, what you need to do is you need to approach each day, each activity with sort of a uh, a zero cost budgeting accounting perspective where everything you do has to re-justify and re-validate its worthiness in your schedule, in your calendar, in your activities. Is this something that is going to help you or is it something that's hurting you? And another good question to ask yourself is, if I hadn't already bought this, if I hadn't already started this, if I hadn't already started going down this path, is Would I still do that same thing today? Would I make the same decision today? Would I buy it again today? And if the answer is no, then we've got to cut it off and we've got to just keep moving. Bigger, better things await. Next, nothing changes if nothing changes. If you're sitting at one, two, three agency clients, you've got up and down months, things are good, then they're not, but you're not hitting those consistent 10K, 20K, 50K, 100K months, something has to change. Like the reason that you are where you are today, good, bad, or ugly, is as a result of the things that you've done up until this point. So it would be insanity to assume that things are just going to miraculously get better on their own. They're not. We need some kind of input. We need something to go there to change things up, to change the way that you're thinking in order to come out better on the other side. Nothing happens without some kind of input. Now, on that note, we could do this. We need some kind of stimulus to give a response. We need some kind of cause to lead to an effect. And we need some kind of input to lead to an output. Of course, the more higher quality the input, the higher quality of the output. There are direct causes you can do, like sending certain emails, doing certain audits, making certain calls, following certain protocols, um, using certain strategies. Those are certain causes that lead to certain effects. See, one of the things that I think is most exciting about starting and scaling and building a really profitable agency, getting it up to multi-sex and then seven figures, is that it forces you to become kind of a realist in the way that the laws of, of nature and human nature and the universe operate, in that if we do certain things, we're going to get certain results. And the only difference between someone who's making millions a year and someone who's struggling to get by is that they've determined what those causes are, what those stimulus are, what those inputs are in order to lead to all of their desired results. And then they simply do them again and again and again. So hopefully those helped you. And if you'd like some more ideas and strategies on how to grow your agency and get more clients, I'm gonna link up a video right here that's gonna provide you with some more ideas and tips. So make sure to click or tap that now. I'll see you in there in just a second.